What's going on, people? Welcome to another video. Today, we got to talk about my favorite 808 and bass mixing trick. Enter the Poltex style EQ, the EQP1A. Today, I'm going to be using the Apogee EQP1A. Full disclosure, Apogee did hook me up with the plugin. They told me it sounded better than the other emulations out there, so I tested it myself, and to be honest, it did sound better, and that's why I'm doing this video. Brief history lesson on the Poltec EQ. It was invented in the 1950s and it's been around ever since. Originally in the manual, it actually said specifically to not use the boost and the attenuation at the same time, which later got known as the Poltec trick. And it's also the trick that I'm gonna show you today. So let's dive in. The song I'm gonna show the example from today is called Stampede. It came out a few months ago. And essentially I've muted the vocal. So all you hear is the beat. I'm gonna play you the beat and then I'm gonna go through how I use the EQP 1A in the project. Let's go over the 808. Headphones are of course required or speakers because you're not gonna be able to hear this on your phone or your laptop. Now, the 808 is already saturated and distorted and it already has sidechain. But if we disable the EQP 1A, the reason why I use the EQP 1A on my 808s is it just makes the low end so thick and dense and it really takes out the mud of the mid-range. I don't necessarily think of this plugin as a traditional EQ. It has a color, it has a characteristic, it has a sound, and it's modeled after the original hardware, which has that magic that people often talk about. Now, if we just play around with the boost and attenuation, we can hear the plugin in effect. Now I usually dial in my boost and attenuation around like between two to five, where five being the most extreme and like the two range adding a little bit of thickness down in the low end. Now down here you have a CPS low frequency selector and essentially this selects the frequency of the low shelf. So we can also do this with 20 being really low and we can set it to 60 being quite high for an 808. I would probably use the 60 and 100 on kicks that I'm gonna show you later in this video. Now, just to show you what's happening when we do this boost, essentially we are boosting something like this and then we are pulling out the mids. Now, usually people say the attenuation is around 10 times the frequency of the low end boost. This instance being 30 hertz, so the attenuation will be looking around something like this, so at 300 hertz, since it's 10 times 30. Now, the particular reason why I like this trick so much is that this range right here is where the low frequencies of the vocals are sitting, is where the fundamental of your snares are sitting, and is where the mix tends to get muddy. So the reason why I use this trick is to add weight to the low sub but clearing up the mud as well at the same time. And of course, to add that magic Poltec sound. So I wanna play the beat for you without the Poltec on the 808, and then I wanna turn it on, and you should be able to hear a difference if you're on headphones. Now I have a subwoofer here so I can tell when it's turned on. It just adds a lot more of that thick low end. So I use this trick in most of my tracks, especially when I'm doing heavy electronic stuff. This is something that not a lot of people talk about, but when you distort and sound design your basses to the point where they're losing a lot of that low end, this is a great tool to add that back into your sound. And I've been using that in all of my songs, to be honest. Now, moving on to another example. In this track, I actually did use the famous Pultec trick on the kick, which is also what it is known for, for use on drums, but I did it in kind of a different way than the usual. Usually you would just put the Pultec EQ on your kick and dial in whether it be 60 or 100 hertz and dial in the boost in insinuation. I'm just gonna play it for you, play around with the knobs and you can hear what it does.
So just putting it directly on the kick at 60 actually makes a tremendous difference. The kick has a lot more thump now. However, I did do a different trick with the kick in this project. So I actually did a send or a bus. And I added the EQP1A at 30. And I put the boost all the way up here. Which is weird. But what I'm essentially doing is boosting a low shelf at 30 hertz. So really boosting the sub of the kick. Attenuating a little bit. But then I ran it through the Opto 3A. This is a classic sound in Opto compressor. And I squashed it completely. But since I'm using it on a send, it's in parallel mode. So I'm going to play you the kick without the send. And then I'm going to turn on the send and you can hear what it's doing. So I'm squashing the send here, boosting the low end with the EQP 1A and squashing it with the Opto 3A. Essentially creating a parallel send for my kick, just really adding in attack, adding in body and really making the kick hit harder. And as you see here, I turned the output meter to gain reduction. So I can actually tell that the Opto 3A is taken off like 20 dB. It's all the way down. <laughs> Essentially creating way more attack, way more aggressive sounding kick. Now let me just take the scent off, play you guys the mix, and then I'll turn the scent on. So the kick is just punching through the mix right now. An important note here is of course that I sidechained the 808 manually to the kick so I don't have any face issues. And that's also why I have the room in the mix to actually do this trick with the kick, adding in the extra attack. So yeah, that is my favorite 808 bass and drum mixing tip that I use in every single track of mine. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Baby, I'm a son on the beat.